Hello and welcome to another fun video. Today we're here with Brian Bourne and his uh, GR86 converted to full electric. And um, the plan is to build them to race against other EVs. Right now they are racing against uh, ICE cars on the track. They are using an 800 volt system, so let's check it out. All right, today we are with Brian and his, uh, well, look what looks like a GR86, but it couldn't be further from a, a stock GR86. So. Tell us everything about your company, this project, where you're heading, and uh, how people can get the hold of you. Um, so this company is a couple years old. It started really out of, uh, you know, a love for motorsport and and uh, a need for a car that didn't need a new motor twice a season. <laughs> My partner Joel and I, we just love new technology. We love going fast, and electric seems like an all new, untapped space of uh, opportunity to learn how to go fast with electric. So that all appealed to us. Um, we decided we wanted to build a company to build a, a race car that initially we can race against gas cars and evolve into a spec series, much like you know Radical Sports Car or Praga, Praga uh, or Rush SR. Um, they build a, a race car that you can take and run in many series, but also their spec series. So this car is you know just at the end of year one of track time. So you know two years of development. This is our first complete season. We've been running the NASA Super Touring Series. So NASA Super Touring, they're 30 minute regional races, a 45 minute national race uh, for the nationals. Um, I gotta be honest, the development was substantially more complicated than we thought. And it took us most of the year to be able to finish a 30 minute race. So we're, we're there now and we still don't have all the answers, but the car works really well now and it's really a lot of fun to drive. Um, the week before SEMA, we had this car at Grid Life at Laguna Seca, and it performed really well there. Got a lot of eyeballs and a lot of questions. So that was a, a really nice pre-SEMA uh, event. So we enjoyed Laguna very much. It's also a dream track, so, okay. of course. So before we go through the whole dri drivetrain and all yeah. the mods you did to the car, did, why did you choose this particular base? So. I mean, there's a bunch of reasons why we told, took the GR86 slash BRZ as our platform. One is that they're extremely inexpensive. So we want to sell somebody a brand new car. We can get a Gen 2 brand new car as a donor. Uh, so the car doesn't have any miles on it when we peel out the ICE powertrain. By the time we sell that, because they're very high value and sought after and they fit every Subaru build anybody might want to do and all the Gen 1 cars, um, you know, we have a great chassis and platform to start with that we couldn't we couldn't buy for what it caught they sell it for and really all all that's left of a gr86 in this car is the sheet metal obviously um, front and rear subframes control arms and steering rack there's really not much left of the car other than that all right that takes us to the next step um, tell us everything about the drivetrain from the battery back to the motors yeah yeah, let's do that. So maybe we should just start start with a look here. All right. Uh, start at the front of the car and work our way backwards. So with this car, uh, as you might know, these cars are, are somewhat known for their oil pressure drops. We've solved that. The 2.4 liter motor no longer has an oil <laughs> pressure drop. Um, no, jo jokes aside, what was important to us with this whole battery box is the battery box starts here and runs down the middle transmission tunnel into the back seats and gas tank area. So the, this is a 60 kilowatt hour pack. Um, it's all within the roll cage and crumple zone. So even at the front here, you know, the crumple zone has been deleted with the cage coming up here and it's within the frame rails. So in a crash, a battery pack is well protected. We spend a lot of time not just figuring out how to go fast, but how to stay alive doing it. <laughs> that, that matters to me. <laughs> um, so the drivetrain is a battery pack. Uh, we This is designed with, with Hypercraft. Uh, Hypercraft's our powertrain partner on yep. this whole car. So the Hypercraft powertrain is a custom battery pack here. Uh, there's Samsung cells in it that have been potted. It, we, there's a whole lot of safety in that we can talk about. Um, and then at the back end of this car, uh, is really the the things that make it go. So it's still a rear wheel drive car, uh, single motor configuration rear wheel drive. So back here we have an inverter and then the motor. 
And of course, the thing that looks like a dry sump tank, which is a dry sump tank. So <laughs> one, one of the unique things of this, uh, aspects of this car is it would traditionally, most electric motors are an oil to water uh, through heat exchanger. And, you know, also most cars run it on the same cooling loop as they would uh, battery inverter. Now, the motor really wants to be at like 90 to 110 Celsius for optimal efficiency, uh, whereas the battery wants to be a lot cooler than that and the inverter cooler still. So um, those are on separate water loops. And in this case, we use just oil for the motor. So this uh, thing that looks like a dry sump, that is a dry sump, is used to both oil and cool the motor. Uh, and then in the bottom there, you can see the two oil coolers. Okay. So, you know, it's a little hard to see how power gets to the wheels when you're looking at the back of this car. So when we take the car out, we always bring the subframe with us. Uh, it rained a little, so that rotor got a little arrested. <laughs> but um, this motor, it's Cascadia Core, uh, Borg Warner Core, and Stealth EV made this motor housing for us. So it packages very nice on the top of the subframe. Uh, it works on that oil dry sump setup. And then it mates to this gearbox that we worked with eTractive on, another Canadian company. And this gearbox does a gear reduction. Um, and it actually goes to the, the GR86 uh, stock axles. So we uh, take the Torsen Limited slip out of the GR86, take it out of the pumpkin, and then we put it the entire differential in here. So obviously planetaries have been removed. We direct drive that differential, but it uh, allows us to keep stock axles. One of the things that's kind of nice about what we've done here is, you know, uh, racing you do have a little contact. You can see when you look at this car that <laughs> this wheel was contacted. <laughs> you know, somebody drove into the car there. We, we posted that is online, but um, you know, that, that kind of stuff happens. You can get Gen 1, Gen 2 parts or a lot of swappable parts, oh. control arms, um, you know, all the pieces. Uh, like here stub axles they're easy to get so wherever you happen to be racing this car you can easily get parts for it and um, talking about the axle uh, tell us more about the suspension and the other mods you need to do so yeah the, this car has a very different weight of course everybody's like oh it's an EV it will be handled poorly no this car is uh, as it sits here with a passenger seat and a lot of extra diagnostic gear is 3200 pounds for a reference point this car is 2810 as it sits in the showroom so we're not carrying a lot of extra weight, uh, but you know, for those extra, depending on how you want to measure it, 350 pounds or 400 pounds, you uh, get instead of 180 wheel horsepower, you get 460 wow. wheel horsepower. Okay. So that's that's a substantial difference there. Um, and um, talking about weight, tell us more about the weight balance compared to the original one. And yeah. So that was a big part of why the suspension needs to be different too. This car is not accidentally the same overall corner weight and weight distribution as a Porsche GT4. That's largely been the reference car that we use to, to run against it. Uh, and so with that, that means it's a 45% front, 55% rear weight distribution, which, which is, is the opposite from the original one, yeah? 100%, it's exactly the opposite. Um, and so, you know, the, we can't use necessarily the Olin's kit for a GR86 because the weight place like per corner weights different weight distribution is different this is a the handling of a mid in, mid engine sports car now and not a front engine car so the valving is different the spring rates are different it's it's they this car spent three days on Olin's shaker rig with their engineers designing an optimal suspension setup so what is the plan for this car? Obviously this is a prototype, but what's the plan? This Are is, you building uh, tens of them, dozens of them, hundreds of them? Oh, I don't know that thousands <laughs> would, would be realistic. Um, but, it, but it is uh, very much a race car. And so we have probably another year of development to get this car to where we want it. Our goal with this car is that if somebody buys it, it becomes the cheapest race car they've ever owned. Uh, because while the initial purchase price is going to be 210 US, um, there should be almost no maintenance on this car, right? There's a front and rear bearing on that motor, and that's a thousand hour service interval. <laughs> like there's there's not a lot to to break. Okay. Now having said that, there's you know to get it to that point, there's still a lot of software for us to do. We're still when we run the car on track, there's still always one of us on a laptop live connected Fine to the car. It, yeah. 
making adjustments, monitoring all the vitals. The, there's, there's real challenges still. And talking about running costs, could you tell us more about the tires, the brakes? Yeah, um, so the brakes, we've partnered with Wellwood. I mean, uh, largely with this car, we've, we've, we've hit up the partners who make components that we know work really well. And so Wellwood brakes uh, on this car, they work great. Now, because the weight distribution is very different, Wellwood designed this, of course, for a GR86. But what's interesting is with a GR86, you got more front weight, a lot less rear. So the brakes on the rear are, of course, undersized for the fact that we have so much more rear weight. But even with that, we turn it down all the way with a proportioning valve because we use regen to, to add a lot more rear brake. So we actually use regen um, to create the brake bias. Normally in a gas car, if we do a build, we put a proportioning valve right beside the driver. Uh, here, we just use regen maps to change the bias. And we're standing here in the Toyo booth, so uh, it, it, I don't even need to really say that Toyo is our preferred uh, tire on this car. Um, but these Toyo RRs on this, I will say, like, like outside of the fact that they sponsor us, um, the wear is amazing. They're a 40 tread wear tire, uh, and they stick amazing all the way to the end of the, the life. They're so consistent over their life. We really love them. Now, we would love to grip this car up more because it makes so much power. It'd be nice to get a wider tire on it, but with, with the grip these tires afford us, it works really quite well. Now, a lot of people ask like, oh, EVs, do they need a special tire? And I'll tell you, the tire doesn't know what the power plant is. <laughs> the That's tire, a very good answer. <laughs> the tire is completely oblivious yeah, yeah. To, to what fuel's being consumed. Uh, and so it, it really comes down to weight. And at 3,200 pounds, like that's a similar kind of weight to the M2s that we run against and, and some of the other vehicles. So uh, the tire is perfect. We haven't seen the interior yet. Let's uh, yeah, let's take a look see. Yeah. Could you go through um, all the different components? And I see sure. there's two seats. Is it a requirement? Uh, is it just for testing? N no, uh, the two seats is because there's really no point having such a unique car if you can't put a passenger in it and scare them a little. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, it's, it really is to, to give ride-alongs. Um, we haven't yet actually given this car to anybody else really to drive. Um, that's, that's something that'll happen, I think, soon. But So what you're looking at there, of course, is the CAN bus keyboard. There's two eight-button keyboards. One of them is all powertrain-related functions, and the other one is all chassis-related functions. You know, your lights, your wipers, etc. Um, your, you know, your map control, like to roll, roll through your regen maps, uh, to move your dash around. Uh, and I think the other thing that's kind of unique about this cockpit, I mean, you've got your radio and stuff, but the, these three things that are on both sides of the outside of the car are also dead center within the driver's view in the middle. So essentially that's your fire suppression, your e-stop and your high voltage status light. Because this car doesn't make any sound, uh, one of the things FIA wants is a ready to move light. So somebody can easily quickly see that the car is one throttle press away from mowing them down mm -hmm. because it doesn't sit there with that big cam lumpy idle. Tell us more about competing with ICE cars. Is there any uh, funny anecdote about working with uh, ICE cars uh, and other teams? There, there's, um, it's been an interesting experience. So of course at the start of the season when we were just first developing it, it was very much a leapfrog game, um, partially because the car got slower over the race. We've solved that now with, with calibrations that last the whole race. Um, and then the other thing is gearing, single speed gearbox. Your power, your torque on an electric motor starts right away and just is the same. Like there's not a torque curve like there would be on a combustion. Uh, so that's great, but then your gearing choice either means that you're in that major power like at high speeds or you're at the it, in low speeds which means that um, you know torque's great but horsepower comes up with rpm yeah right so it made for a little bit of leapfrog and still does with combustion cars so while they're constantly shifting to stay at the top of their power uh, we've got torque throughout but our horsepower grows at, you know in the single speed so uh, you know at VIR when we had 5.19 gears in this car 
we were just walking everybody on the straight <laughs> and, and we we're like losing a couple places in the in the tight stuff and then we've got 6.2 gears now which seems to be a good compromise we're we're much better in the tight stuff but we lose a little on the top end uh th there's there's a, that's one of the other interesting things about right your racing ev it's just that the lap time might be similar but the where you're making those times is a little different. different yeah so depending on race tracks you could have different uh gear ratios that, is that allowed with the regulations oh for sure yeah okay yeah all right so which track did you take this uh, to and where will we be able to see the car in the next few months or next year oh great question so this car most of the development for this car was done at atlanta motorsport park uh scale of performance has a garage at amp and amp is wonderful because we can roll it out of our garage straight onto the track do just one lap if we want to and then put it back on the hoist or spend the day um, so it's a wonderful facility the car is raced at hyperfest uh, as a big event vir it's raced at umc in utah um, it's raced at laguna seca uh, it's been at Mossport in Canada. It's 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 been at a bunch of places around, um, and each time we we learn more, make some more changes, and and figure more out. It's it's been a lot of data gathering. I think you know there's some big events that we'll want to do, including Hyperfest again. That's a huge festival. That's great. Grid Life events are amazing, uh, and they really show this car well. So. Uh, you can guarantee we'll, we'll be at more grid life events next season. Okay. Um, as for which one yet, I, well, we're going to wait till everybody announces their schedule for 2024 and then figure out what makes a sensible route. <laughs> so APR, um, their wing is amazing um, and professional awesome. Uh, funny company name, but like those guys are professional and awesome. Uh, <laughs> that really helped with the aerodynamics. So like the splitter on this car comes on and off really quickly. The carbon rods mean that if you take a little bit of an off-road excursion, they can flex up. Um, but you know the titanium sliders run over the curbing well. They, they they really create a lot of nice hardware. You can see the clevises there, and with just one little wrench, we can quickly adjust the splitter. Uh, and this car has been to the wind tunnel. You can see their wind tunnel video on our YouTube. But it's so great how how adjustable everything is on this car so we're really thankful for our aero partners all right thank you very much i think we've covered it all uh, yeah. where should people visit your, your website to learn more about the car and potentially the series so we're, we're at scalar performance on basically all the platforms instagram and youtube is where we share a lot of our learnings one of the things i've actually got a cybersecurity background which is an industry where people really share because everybody needs to get better together uh, and I just bring that kind of culture to this so I, I share everything that we learn on those channels and uh, we're happy for people to reach out and share what we've learned all right fantastic we look forward to taking this for a spin on the track uh, hopefully next year yeah and thank you very much thanks Jerome this has been a blast